Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things. Through him, he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful work. When he had made purification for sin, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than others. God's word for us, God's people, thanks be to God. George was 92. Edith was 89, and they were so excited they had decided to get married. They went for a stroll to discuss the wedding, and on the way, they passed by a drugstore. So George suggests that they go in, and he addresses the man behind the counter. Are you the owner? And the farmer says, yeah, I sure am. So said, well, we're about to get married. Do you sell heart medication? <laughs> yeah, of course we do. How about support holes for circulation? Yeah, we sell those as well. What about medicine for rheumatism, osteoporosis, and arthritis? Got all kinds of it, the pharmacist says. How about waterproof furniture pads and depends? Yeah, we've got those as well. Hearing aids, denture supplies, sleeping pills, insure? Absolutely, I've certainly got all that. You sell wheelchairs, walkers, and canes as well? All kinds, he said, but I'm curious about something. What are all these questions for? George smiles and he replies to the pharmacist, we'd like to use your store for our bridal registry. (laughs) (laughs) Fall. It's the time when the church begins to get refocused after the summer, you might say. It's also a time that means that it's when the church begins to worry about the church's ministries. Recruiting leaders for the work of the church and planning for the year ahead. That means that in many congregations, even as lively and lovable as this one can be, there's still that stressful, challenging time of the year. Can we keep the doors open? Is there a way that we can keep going? I mean, let's be honest with it. as we begin to move toward winter. And we are confronted by the things around us. We find ourselves in a situation maybe perhaps similar to that, to the letter of Hebrews. We don't know what their problems were. This letter was meant to extract, but, but this letter was meant to express and address those problems. If we read between the lines, we know that we are listening in a letter that has become, to a church that has become discouraged. Christ had promised to come soon, but now as the church moved into its second century, where was Jesus? Had he forgotten his promise that he would return? He said he'd bring back a kingdom on earth, but here in this church, this Hebrew church, that's been prowling along for decades, and their situation doesn't feel like they have a lot of success at times. Can you imagine how these early Christians must have felt? 
being told that he will come back any day, any time, any hour, and he hasn't returned. They're despondent. Maybe without hope. Maybe their congregation was struggling. Maybe. They could feel a little bit like us at times. As a pastor and as former pastor, excuse me, I'm retired now, but anyway. Somewhere always in the back of your minds, you worry a little bit. What if this or that happens? What if you get sick? What if something drastic happens to the congregation? <coughs> but we can live with hope as well. Because we know that in this letter to Hebrews, he attempt, Paul, the writer, attempts to give these early Christians believers hope. The writer tells them, he doesn't tell them to work hard. Or to give more. Or to make their believing deeper. The writer urges them to then look up to Christ, the lover and the Lord of the church. God made his son the heir of everything and created the world through him. The son is the light of God's glory and the imprint of God's being. He maintains everything. Sits at the right hand of the highest majesty. He doesn't leave anything out of control. But right now, we don't see everything under their control, that control. However, we do see Jesus. He's the one who is now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of his death. The salvation, this salvation belongs to many sons and daughters whom he is leading to glory. <coughs> <coughs> Maybe, I don't know, maybe sometimes when you look around and you wonder, are you really making a difference in the world, in somebody's life? We're a loving, giving bunch of people, but why do people not come through the doors? Is it us? Is it something we don't do that should bring more or something we do that should bring more? Discouragement? At times. But this letter to the church, the Hebrews, is meant to strengthen and give a commitment to these early Christians by telling them that Christ not only loves them, but Christ is actually working and ruling in the world today. And I know for a fact Christ is working in this place. In your lives, in the lives of those that you touch outside of the walls of this place. When the world was made, Christ... Son of God created the world. Christ is nothing less than the light of God's glory, the imprint, shall we say, of God's being. Christ didn't simply come to us to teach us and to die for us. He maintains everything. He's at the right hand of the highest majesty. He doesn't leave anything out of their control. Has he looked at our world today? Don't we seem like all control is gone? In the midst of all the 
arguments, all the madness, the tenseness. in the midst of destruction in North Carolina. Can you imagine how those folks must feel? Once they had a nice home and children and family, and now, in the matter of a few minutes, it's gone. We have a person that attending the church that we're attending right now and her daughter knows of a family that six family members have been missing since the flood began. She's not been able to, of course by now they're presumed to be dead, but six. Whom she had just talked to on the telephone that day. We certainly do not see everything under God's control, do we? There's setbacks, there's disappointments, there's opposition. I can suspect that at times there's some discouragement from this congregation. But we cannot allow ourselves to linger in that discouragement. It's a good time to remember that our efforts succeed not because of others, but because of Christ. He is the one who is now crowned with glory. It, it is he who works with us and for us and accomplishes his purposes in the world. Maybe... We get to the point where we can't really get excited anymore. It's funny how things change as you get older, isn't it? I knew when I began to get up in the morning and get the newspaper and turn immediately to the obituaries that I'd started to get older. I didn't look for the news or the sports pages of the day. I looked to see if one of my friends might have gone on to glory. It's easy at times to wonder what's going to happen. What will happen to us? What will happen to the world? It's certainly easy to get discouraged. All the hate that's going on these days. All the things that seem so contrary to everything we believe. But we have to have faith in remembering that Jesus is alive in the world today. He's alive in the hearts and in the minds of this church. The Holy Spirit moves you out of this place to go and touch other lives, which you may never know the consequences. Through your missions work, you're touching people's lives in ways that you can't imagine. It'd be nice if you could see that sometimes, but usually not. You see, God only calls us to be faithful. I used to have a sign that hung in my office that said, God did not call me to be successful, only faithful. And that's what God calls each of us to do, to be faithful. To live our lives as though we know. That he is the king of glory. To know that he lived, died, and, re and was resurrected so that his spirit could live among us and in us. That what we do, or maybe I should say that what you do, makes a difference in the lives of people in the world. 
in this close community and also in other places in the world. Don't ever wonder if you're making a difference because you are. You're making a difference in the lives of people every day. Will you see it? No. We're not called to see it. We're only called to be faithful. To live out our lives in such a way that others know who we are. One of the hardest things I always had to remember as a pastor is that when I go out into the community, I'm the church. Because I get discouraged just like you do. I get tempered when I'm driving sometimes. Or sometimes when service is bad or things are slow, but I always had to remember to tell myself, no, you can't unload on them. You're the church, but so are you. Not just me. You are the church, and because you are the church, you are the bride of Christ, remember? He's with you and amongst you, touching you and loving you and changing the world. The folks that you've lost in the last two years, I know have been many. I know you've struggled with what you might think to do. But just remember, that in whatever effort you have, whatever may be your calling, that you're not alone. That the Lord through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit is with you every step of the way. Be nice if, be nice if maybe you had a sign, huh? Don't we all think that? Who of us in the church this morning has it maybe thought at one time or another? Come on, God, give them a sign. Show them. I'm telling myself, maybe you're not like me, but maybe there's been a time where you thought, come on, Jesus, just zap them once. And then he says, I left you a son. Look at the cross. That's your sign for hope, for understanding, for loving, and for caring. The cross. And I left you a couple of other signs too. You know the big yellow thing that comes up in the sky every morning in the east. It sets in the west. Or that big thing with light in the sky at night. It's always in the same place when we look for it. Did science really do that or did I do that? But the biggest sign he left you is this. Your brothers and sisters in Christ. Because you know if you're down and you're hurting that somebody here is going to pick you up. You know that when you need a friend, you have to decide which one you want to pick. When the world seems discouraged, you come here on Sunday mornings to be lifted up, to have and hear that there is hope in the world. Hope in the world, hope in this church, and hope in your lives.
in the name of the one who was, who is, and who is yet to come. Christ our Lord. Amen.